What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm going to show you some of the things that we're harvesting right now in August. A lot of you have asked, Luke, what are you, what's kind of going on in your garden? What are you harvesting? What are you switching out? What are you pulling out? And so uh, I thought I'd show you all what's going on in the garden in mid-August. As all of you know, in mid-August, those are kind of the dog days of summer. They're very hot, they're very humid, and it's kind of a weird transitional time. And a lot of gardeners, they want to figure out how they can maximize crops even during the dog days of summer, even in mid-August. And so when it's really hot, it's really humid, there is some kind of awkwardness, but I'm going to show you what we're doing to hopefully give you guys some inspiration as to what you can be doing as well. So one of the biggest heads of cabbage has kind of had some some uh, some pest damage. We'll have to eat this one first, but it looks absolutely incredible. This thing is giant. This is one of the biggest cabbage, uh, one of the biggest heads of cabbage that we've grown in a very long time. This thing is probably close to, I would say at least uh, nine pounds, maybe close to ten pounds. But uh, it'd, be, it'd be ten pounds if it didn't have uh, this in it. But we had we had a hungry rabbit in the garden. And um, so, hey, rabbits gotta eat too. But yeah, got a beautiful head of cabbage there. Let's get another one. Here's an absolutely picture perfect head of cabbage. Obviously, as you can see, the outer leaves, they have some bug damage just a little bit here and there. And that's totally normal in an organic garden. A lot of people, they send in uh, pictures and uh, questions asking what they can do to prevent these holes in their brassicas, like their cabbage, their kale, their cauliflower, things like that. You really can't do a whole lot about it. What you can do is you can uh, use some, some BT, that's a Bacillus thuringiensis spray. You can spray your crops down, but we find that's really just a, you know, that, that's uh, in a worst case scenario. Um, a lot of times what happens is that when the plants are young and the leaves are tender, they might be going through some stress and that stress allows the, the bugs to take advantage of their weakened immune system, your plant's weakened immune system. But if you take care of your soil, you, know, you keep watering your plants, you keep them well fertilized, and you, you make sure that the soil quality is, is at, its optimum, uh, you know, at its optimum level, what happens is it generates this biofilm. And look how beautiful that biofilm is. You can almost, you can write in it. And so that biofilm is the plant's natural mechanism. It's a, nat it's a natural uh, protectant on the leaf. And that actually protects it from things like, like uh, cabbage moths and aphids and white flies and things like that. And so even though we have a lot of them in our garden, they really don't plague our cabbages that much because our plants are healthy. They're actually defending themselves. And that's our first, that's our first line of defense is, is uh, you know, using, letting plants protect themselves. And that right there is an absolutely stunning head of cabbage. This thing is, I think this one actually might be heavier than the other one, even though it's smaller, it's way more dense. This thing is probably, I would say 10 to 12 pounds absolutely huge just enormous wow all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out all these beans now we're not just going to leave this bed bare of course what we're going to do is we're going to pull these beans out and we're going to turn over the bed with some fresh compost and fertilizer and then we're going to plant another harvest of beans here now one of the biggest questions we get is luke why would i pull out my bean plants if they look healthy I mean, these are green these look like they're growing they could probably still produce something so wouldn't it be counterproductive to pull them out and the answer is no, it's actually not counterproductive because you're gonna get more production by planting a fresh crop here. Yes, these are green, yes, they might still produce, and in fact, there's a few that are flowering. And so it might seem crazy to pull them out. However, these plants are tired, they're done growing. Um, you know, when plants are, are green and they look healthy, that doesn't mean that they're not exhausted. And so these plants here, they're, they're tired. They've grown the whole season, they've grown through the, the heat of summer, all the drought that's been thrown at it, all of the, the, the heat, all the temperature swings that have been thrown at it. And so these plants are kind of just done. They've fizzled out. They've produced multiple flushes of beans for us, and we've enjoyed a lot from them, but their time is done. And so it's really important as a gardener that you learn when to pull them out and kind of when to, uh, when to turn them over. Because I know a lot of gardeners, and myself included, fell into this category where, you know, we, we, we like to leave things in until they're just until they're dead. Um, let every bean produce and really get every last uh, last little harvest out of every little plant. But when it comes to maximizing your production, you realize early on that, you know, I might be able to get one harvest of beans, you know, maybe a meal or two 
out of all of these plants, these, this about 16 to 20 square feet of beans, one or two meals. That's really not that much for me. If I tear all these out, remineralize the soil with compost and fertilizer, replant a fresh, uh, fresh set of beans here, sure, I'm not gonna have any harvest for four to five weeks, but in you know, six to seven weeks, as, uh, you know, as the season is winding down, I'm gonna be getting harvest after harvest of tons of beans, where I'm gonna be getting three to five meals a day, and I can actually have enough to even put up in the freezer. So it's worthwhile to do that. So I'm gonna get these beans pulled out, and then we'll move on to the next, uh, next bit of garden chores to do. Now all these plants are going to go into the compost pile, of course. I'm not gonna let them go to waste. They will be utilized. So I'm gonna compost these. And then it's gonna be very important for me to wait to plant, uh, to plant any seeds. A lot of you, a lot of you have fallen into this, uh, into this trap of wanting to plant during the heat of the day. It's a very big mistake to plant seeds during the heat of the day. And the reason why is because seeds, they need even moisture in order to germinate well. And bean plants, bean seeds sprout extremely quickly. If you put your bean seeds in the ground and the soil is warm and it's damp, your bean seeds are gonna germinate in 24 to 48 hours, extremely fast. And so the worst thing you can do is put them in the soil right now when it's really hot and then water because that starts the germination process. But the, right now the soil is, as a, it, it is at a temperature that is just not able to really uh, sprout seeds very well. It's very, very hot out. We're talking, it's like 85, almost 90 degrees. And so it's just not something that you wanna start seeds in. We'll start seeds later tonight. We'll start seeds after the sun has set and then we'll water very thoroughly. And that means that we're gonna have a really good, uh, good opportunity for them to have 12 to 16 hours where they're not gonna be having the sun beating down on them and they can absorb that moisture really well and start germinating faster. So just a quick little tip for you guys, just because you're pulling your bed out doesn't mean you have to plant something right there right now. Uh, just wait a little bit. And the final note as I'm pulling out these plants that I think is really important to note is that when you're pulling out your plants, uh, look at it from a sense of uh, a fresh start. You know, I know a lot of people that when they, when they pull out their plants, they, uh, they might not have gotten as much as they wanted. And you might be in this, this boat as well. And I've certainly fallen into this category of a person that, you know, if I'm pulling out a plant that did not produce as much, or maybe it didn't last as long as I really wanted, I'm frustrated, I'm really, I'm bothered when I'm pulling these plants out. And I can't wait to get something else in its place to just kind of, to, to prove these plants wrong and to, uh, to produce something for me and show myself that, that yes, I can grow something to, uh, to fruition and I can be a successful gardener. And you know, these beans, they produced well for me. Uh, did they last as long as I wanted? Of course not, nothing ever does as a gardener. But you know, when you're looking at these plants, don't take the mindset of, you know, I'm gonna pull these plants out and, and have a very hostile mindset. Um, and you might not be that way and that's fine. I would encourage you not to be because that's not really what a garden is about. A garden is about uh, being mindful. A garden is about uh, being thankful for what, you, uh, for what you can grow and what's been produced. And, um, and so for me, I look at it as a fresh start. Even if it's something that really did not produce as well as I would have hoped, I look at it as a fresh start for me to start new, but I look at it with a sense of optimism and excitement rather than frustration and kind of uh, one-upsmanship. You know, I don't, have to, I don't have to do one better in this bed to prove myself, uh, to, you know, to uh, make myself feel better as a gardener. Uh, for me, I'm always learning, I'm always advancing, and whatever happened to this past crop, whatever mistakes that were made, they're in the past and I can only really look to the future. And so I just would encourage you to take that mindset because when you do, it's really incredible what it does to your gardening experience. You find so much more joy in everything that you do, no matter what season it is and no matter what went wrong in the garden and no matter what you're planting where. So just give it a shot and let me know if it kind of changes your mindset a little bit. Oh, wow. <laughs> this pineapple tomato is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. gorgeous tomato it's easily over a pound can't wait to make a sandwich with that here's a great white tomato beautiful cream colored beef steak so pretty I love these tomatoes they're very low acid 
but they almost have kind of a citrusy flavor to them. They're so delicious. I really, really encourage you to try the Great White if you've not yet already. Now, they're not everybody's cup of tea because they are so low acid that they don't have that tomato kick, but I really like them because they're, they're very sweet, they're very creamy. They're a meaty tomato because they're a beef steak, but uh, I, like, I cannot get over that kind of citrusy taste that they have. It's just so incredible. And the final thing that we're going to do is we're gonna rip out the zucchini. We're gonna pull out the zucchini so that we can turn over the bed, apply some trifecta, and then we're gonna plant another harvest of zucchini here that's gonna be ready by the end of the season. Now, a lot of people, they like to, just like the bush beans, they like to leave the zucchini in the ground until the very last minute. And the issue with that is that, yes, you can get one or two more zucchinis, but when the plants are, they're looking like this, they're struggling from powdery mildew, you're in the dog days of summer where it's hot, it's humid, it's muggy, the plants have already, they're just so tired of producing, they're tired of fighting off disease, they're tired of fighting off drought and, and heat, your plants are exhausted. It's time to refresh the bed. And you can leave them in, you can get a few more zucchinis, but what you're going to do is you're gonna miss out on that, that time window. The time window is that, that, that clock that's ticking down to the first frost date. And you cannot stop the first frost date from coming. It's inevitable, it's going to happen. Unless of course you live in someplace that does not get a frost. Of course, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm very jealous of you, but, but I am talking to, to most people that get a frost. And that, that, that clock is ticking down. And when we have about 70 days until our first frost date, we need about 60 days to have a fully mature uh, zucchini crop, about 50 to, 50 to 60 days generally. And so we have just enough time to get seeds in the ground, get them maturing, and get a harvest out of them. And we're gonna get way more than two zucchinis when we do that. So yes, we could leave these in and get two zucchinis, or we could pull them out and get like 10 or 20 zucchinis. So it's well worth it. And if the season extends a little bit, we get lucky, we don't have a first frost come at the normal time, we might even get 20 or 30 zucchinis. So it's a, it's a risk worth taking, and, uh, and it's one that I would encourage you guys to take as well. So I'm gonna get these pulled out, but that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you learned something new, and I really do hope that this encourages you guys to, to uh, get out in your garden, pull out crops that are getting tired, uh, replant, replant crops that you have time for. If you don't know what to plant and you're looking for crops to plant, I would encourage you guys to go check out my video. We also have a blog post on how to, uh, how to prepare a fall garden, what to plant and when, and, uh, and I would encourage you guys to, to do that because uh, there's so much time left and you have so much opportunity to grow so much more food. And so I really hope that you take advantage of that time that you have. Make the best of this year. Make the best of this growing season. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye. And if you guys are watching, I have one more final note about zucchini and planting a fall harvest of zucchini. We've talked about this a lot. And that's when you plant a fall harvest of zucchini, you have a lot less chance of squash vine borer. One of the issues that we have is that when we get into the dog days of summer, squash vine borers, they begin to uh, burrow into our plants. And that's what really has caused a lot of these plants to fall over and die. And you can see the signs of squash vine borer is that you can see where they've been burrowing. You can see that they are making uh, a nest inside this squash plant here. And one way to, uh, to prevent that is to plant your squash plants when there's no more risk of squash vine borer. Squash vine borer only come one time a year. So after they hit your crops, they're not gonna come back because they don't have enough time. They'll come next season, but it's done. So after your squash vine borer season is over, it's time to get another fresh harvest of, uh, of zucchini in the ground and you can grow them far more successfully. So get your zucchini in the ground and uh, grow bigger, go home. All right, bye guys.